feeling off, a little under the weather, maybe you didn't get enough sleep last night, or you just need a little emotional zhuzhing, herbal remedies can help you, and although they can't replace a doctor, they can help lift your mood up or set you in the right place where you need to maybe get a good night's sleep or something. I'm Suzanne, and today we're gonna to talk about growing herbal remedies. It's nice to be able to walk outside, snip some herbs in your garden, maybe take a couple plant leaves and things like that and make yourself a nice cup of tea or a syrup or use your herbs in cooking all to help you kind of use it as a remedy inside of your body. Herbs and plants have been used for thousands of years. There's even archeological proof that plants have been used uh, for over 50,000 years to, you know, as a medicine or as a healing property. So things like rosemary is one of the oldest plants that we know of being used this way. Think of something like the Mediterranean diet and why it's so healthy for you. It's not just the olive oil, it's the rosemary, it's the oregano, it's the thyme. They all have beneficial properties within your body. Ancient cultures have used herbs, seeds, barks, and other parts of the plant to heal, to have for ceremonial occasions, all sorts of things like that. But just remember there's a lot of trial and error back then, even now, and there have been a ton of charlatans trying to sell you snake oil and other things like that. So make sure that when you're using the herbal remedies that you know what you're doing and that you don't use them instead of going to the doctor. The key thing that makes plants so beneficial are terpenes, and terpenes add taste, fragrance and pigments to a plant. I'm sure you've heard about these in other ways, but this is true in all herbs and plants, uh, herbaceous plants. So let's talk about some of these herbs. I think the one that's used the most in so many cultures is thyme. It's used for syrups and teas and in cooking, of course, and French thyme is probably the number one, but there are so many different kinds of thyme that you can use. Thyme is used as a kind of like a cough suppressant. It also helps as an expectorant as well. It's really good for just a lot of coldy, fluey kind of symptoms. We have um, the straight French thyme, we have English thyme. They're both used kind of inter, um, interchangeably. And then there are so many other beautiful ones like lemon and lime thyme, and they smell so delightful. Next up is sage. There are a lot of different sages, but the one that you're gonna be utilizing for an herbal remedy is basically a cooking sage. This is Burgarten, this variety, and this is the one that you'll use. Um, we talk a lot about white sage and things like that. That's not really what we're going to be going for for this sort of thing that's more of like a burning and you can you can eat it and everything but sage is a great antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and you'll find this with a lot of herbs that they have these same qualities antioxidant anti-inflammatory it's a great combination for a cup of tea so oregano is a big popular herb a lot of oils um, people are using this for all sorts of anti-inflammatory and antioxidant reasons. Oregano is great. Of course, you're gonna use it in that Mediterranean diet, in your Greek food, in your Italian food. There are also a wide variety of oreganos. Um, so there, there is spicy oregano, and there is Greek oregano, Italian oregano, and many, many other varieties. So just, you know, see which one you like. They're all a little bit different, but always fun to grow in your garden as well. It can be a nice little ground cover landscape plant. So next up we have classic mint. I mean, everybody loves a little cup of mint tea. For me, I find that it really kind of like picks me up in the morning. For some reason, I just love the scent of it. I love the smell of it, but it's also really good for soothing your tummy. And that is a really good thing. You know, if maybe coffee is kind of getting you a little bit agitated, you can have a cup of mint tea and it's really delightful. Um, this here is actually uh, not a true mint. This is Herba Buena, which is a native to California and it is a great tea. The scent is amazing. The taste is amazing. It's a little bit different. Like all the other mints, they're all pretty invasive. So when you grow mint, you gotta give it its own container and make sure that it doesn't spread and take over your entire garden. Mint is one of those things, like all the other herbs, so many different varieties. This one is called Kentucky Kernel. So it has just a little bit different flavor. You know, I, I would guess that you would want to use it for a mint julep or something like that. There's chocolate mint, there's apple mint, there's strawberry mint, there's just, there's peppermint, there's spearmint. And so they're all pretty um, fun to grow, very easy. Just water them regularly and then 
Up here we have cat mint and catnip. Um, two mints, but different effects on cats. So of course, cat mint is a beautiful herb. Your cats probably won't bother it too much. Catnip, of course, the complete opposite. Your cats will go crazy for it. So it's up to you deciding what you want to grow in your garden. Um, they're both beautiful. They both have really, really pretty flowers. I think this one has a gorgeous little bluey purple flower and there are a lot of different varieties of both of these as well. Short ones, tall ones, ones that spread a little bit more, they're all great. So next up is lemon balm. A lot of people like to use this for teas and things like that, but it's also, although it's in the mint family, it's a very calming herb. Whereas a lot of the other mint teas are a little bit more uplifting. Lemon balm is calming and it just has the most delightful scent. Um, you can, of course, mix and match all of the mints and have what you like, but adding something like this or the, the other mints, just julienning it and putting it into a salad just adds a little brightness to everything and it also helps with the calming or the uplifting. This tiny plant grows into quite a large thing. It'll get about three feet tall, three feet wide. This is lemongrass and lemongrass is one of my favorite summer teas because it's uh, you know one of the herbs that you can use as a sun tea. You can just chop off some of the really nice thick um, stems and put them in some water, sit them in the sun and then you can have some gorgeous sun tea, add a little sweetener to it. It is delightful but of course you can use lemongrass in cooking from various cultures. It is so good it's a really easy plant to grow, but it does grow into quite a big clump. You'll have to cut it back just like a grass in the uh, late fall. So this is fennel. Um, fennel is usually something you find in the supermarket as a big bulb and you're going to slice it up and put it into salads. It has this beautiful anise licorice taste that is so good and it just really complements a lot of other flavors, but it has really nice tummy calming qualities. So it's also really good if you have a, a nice meal and then you have a little fennel salad afterwards. It, it really just kind of helps as a digestive. Um, fennel is also used the seeds. So a lot of people will crush the seeds a little bit and use that, that oil as part of their culinary practice and it is delicious. So rosemary, I don't, I don't want to miss out on rosemary. A lot of people don't drink rosemary tea. It's pretty, it's pretty hefty. It's very um, flavorful, but you can mix it with other things and still get those beneficial uh, properties of it. The oils are so good for you and just read up on a lot of the herbs. Um, I just want to say for my last herb, I would be remiss about talking about making herbal teas if I didn't discuss stevia. Stevia is a nice herb that you can use. People use it to sweeten things. The stevia is much more sweet when it's dry. So just kind of keep that in mind because it is very, very sweet. It adds a lot of um, sweetness to your teas or your dishes or something, but uh, stevia is more concentrated when it's dry. Growing herbs is really easy. You can do them in little pots. You can do them in your garden. A lot of them get a lot bigger than you think and also you want to keep certain ones away from each other. As I've mentioned already, mint has a tendency to take over so give it its own pot and um, you can grow different mints together but sometimes they will, um, the taste will kind of like cross each other so it's better to give them each their own pot. You can grow some herbs in the house but a, most of the time I would say just grow them outside. Um, they love sun and they love um, air and everything and growing them in a window you can do it but you got to turn them all the time and make sure that they're not getting little indoor pests like mites and things like that. Separate your herbs into ones that use a lot of water and ones that don't use a lot of water. So ones that use a lot, things like um, chives and basil and parsley and uh, cilantro, coriander, those use regular watering. They need to be kept consistently moist. And then there's the other side of it with rosemary and thyme and sage and things like that. They're much uh, lower water needs and so if you, you put them in a container together, they're gonna do great. Keep in mind, most herbs stay fairly small, but when you're talking about something like rosemary that starts this little and cute, but it will usually get up to like four or five feet tall, maybe three to four feet wide, just keep that in mind as a thing. You can put it in your garden and have it as a shrub, but um, in a container, it's almost always gonna get really big, really fast. And upright rosemary, prostrate rosemary that's tumbling down. You can use them both for cooking, but the upright is a little bit better. It's a little bit more aromatic.
When you're planting them, whether it's in a pot or in the ground, just make sure that you have nice loose soil in a pot. You can just use potting soil if you want. Use a really nice compost potting soil, but um, you want good drainage. You do not want those roots to be like sitting in water a lot. So if you're growing them in the house and you have that little saucer underneath, make sure that saucer never has water in it. And of course you can fertilize them. It's always gonna be great for them, but for the most part, you're gonna be eating them as you grow them and the plant will usually continue growing. So you've grown your herbs, you're ready, and you want to store them. Um, drying is the best practice. Most people do this, so a few tips. You want to harvest them before they flowered. Um, you can eat them after they flower, but they taste much better before. So if you're seeing flowers form, pinch them back, let the plant get a little bit bigger, then you can harvest it. You want to do it on a dry day, so you're going to cut them off or pull the plant. You want to brush off any dirt on them. You don't want to wash them. You want the herbs to be as dry as possible. And then you're going to hang them upside down for about a week. Make sure that there's a lot of airflow around them and no direct sunlight. Once your herbs are dry, you're going to take them off the stems, get rid of the stems. You can compost them and then you're going to crush them and put them into a nice airtight container a glass jar is perfect. You can also freeze your herbs, so just mix them with a little water when they're um, not dry. So you can you know, chop them up, put them with a little water, and then put them in ice cubes trays. You can also put them in olive oil and freeze them and then use them for cooking. My last tip for using herbs is one of my favorites. If you have a little bowl of sugar or a jar, a glass jar is great throw some herbs in there, throw some lavender, throw some mint, throw something dry in there, and then it will infuse the sugar with that flavor and scent, and then you can use it in cooking, baking, your coffee, whatever. It's so nice and it's such a luxury to yourself. Using herbs in cooking, storing them, drying them, um, every way that you can is so great but my favorite way is this ritual of making myself a cup of tea whether i'm you know tired i didn't get a good night's sleep last night or i just want to pet myself up in the morning or i just want to take a quiet moment tea is such a great way to relax and take care of yourself and so um the cool thing is having lots of nice little fun things to make it really good for yourself so um Beautiful cups are really, really nice. I love these. Um, having beautiful tea strainers, having a nice teapot. You can take your tea on the go. Having all these really wonderful accessories to make it right. You don't want to have to be fumbling around looking for things. If you have your tea area and your tea accoutrement, um, it's a great way to start your day or end your day. Herbs are exhaustive. You can learn so many wonderful things about their beneficial properties and help yourself feel a little bit better each day. Please go to our website, rogersgardens.com. We have a wonderful herb library. Each herb is broken down into what it can do and recipes and lots of really good information about it. Here at Rogers Gardens, we always have herbs for sale. We have our Facebook, we have Instagram, we have our YouTube channel that you can subscribe to and learn about all of the fascinating things that you can from Rogers Gardens. That's it for me today. Have a nice cup of tea.